Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another in my RHCSA practice session videos. I'm going to cover two objectives within the Manage Containers objective group for the exam. And we're going to look at perform container management using commands such as Podman and Scopeo, and also perform basic container management such as running, starting, stopping, and listing running containers. Before we dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video. I also want to invite everyone, if you enjoy the content of this video, to make sure you click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be notified when new content comes available. So let's dive into doing some container management. It does seem a bit redundant having two objectives that basically say the same thing, perform container management, and one telling you the tools to use and the other telling you some of the things that you need to do with containers. I guess it's, it's kind of nice to have the actual tools listed because with some of the other objectives, such as some of the objectives with storage and needing to use Stratus and VDO, you don't always um, have the, the explicit tool said, hey, use this. And so I guess this might save you some time of having to dig through RHEL documentation to know the particular tools that they're expecting you to use for these. So for the third objective, the perform container management, we'll just be um, doing that as we are doing the actual tasks. Between Podman and Scopio, which I'll I'll say both Scopio and Scopeo, I'm not 100% sure which one is correct, so don't get confused when I when I use them both. We'll mainly be using Podman for the exercises in this video. Scopio we would be using for inspecting containers. So I've went and signed in as root. There are a couple of things that sometimes don't function 100% well as a non-root user in CentOS Stream. And we'll see that in a future video when I talk about running services inside of a container. But let's just do podman search. We'll start with UBI. We'll pipe that to less. So we'll get the universal base image. We'll use the one from the registry.access.redhat.com so we don't have to do any credentials. Copy that. And the very first thing that we're going to do is just run a, um, a container. So to do this, we'll do podman run. I'm actually going to do dash D. This is for detach. And from what I understand, that basically allows the container to be running in the background, which we'll want for a couple of the things that we're going to be doing. And then we're just going to paste in the name of the container image. We'll press enter. It'll try to pull the image down. And after a few seconds, it completes, and you'll have a container running from that image. To be able to list the running containers, we'll do podman ps. I'm going to do dash a for all. Without the dash a, it would only show the actual running containers. And here we see that the um, it exited with zero. The other thing to notice is that we have Keen underscore Nightingale as the, the friendly name of the container. When you run a container, if you don't specify a name, then Podman is going to um, is going to just give it a name. For example, I could run another container, run, and we're going to give it dash dash name test UBI. And we'll do the same image. And this time it didn't have to download the image because it uh, doing the the run command if the image doesn't already exist on your um, on your local system then it will download the image here the image was already available so far to do podman ps dash a we see that they have both exited and one is named my test UBI so let's grab an image that's going to um, that'll be a little bit more persistent, or rather, let's create a container that'll be a bit more persistent. So let's clear the screen. I'm going to do podman search httpd. We'll do podman run dash d, and then the container image name. Actually, we'll go ahead and give this a name as well. We'll call it httpd test dash dash name. And since we don't already have that image locally, it's going to gather the image. 
and after a few seconds it completes. So if I were to do podman ps, notice that it is listed with podman ps. The others are not because those containers are currently not running right now. The status for this is going to be up. But if I were to do the podman ps-a, then that's going to list all of our containers that we have, regardless of their, of their status. So we have our HTTPD test up. I'm not going to use a browser to, um, to display the web image because that's really a part of the run a service inside a container um, objective, which I'm planning on doing a separate video about that. But for this particular objective, so we, we've, we've run the, um, the container. If we wanted to stop a container, podman stop and then the container name. And often it will return the unique identifier for the container. And then this time if we were to do podman ps dash a, we see that our HTTPD test has exited. Then if we wanted to start the container, let me clear my screen first. We would simply give podman start and then HTTPD test, which this time it, it returned the friendly name. So if I do our podman ps a, we see that its status is up. One thing I want to try, just because I haven't done this prior to the video, let's see what happens. Let's say, so podman stop HTTPD test. I'm just curious to see if we do podman ps, or actually, let's check out the man page real quick. And what I'm looking to see is if ps is how this is going to be. Yeah. So man podman ps. So it's just giving us our options because what I was wanting to see is if I could just look at the status of a single container. Let's try that. So podman HTTPD test PS. All right, so that did not give us what I want. Let's try podman PS HTTPD test. All right, and it says it takes no arguments, which makes sense because it's just listing all of your containers and what it would be expecting is a like dash a or or whatever for our, our podman ps as i mentioned before i'm not a master of, of containers but what i'm focusing on are the specific objectives for the rhcsa exam so here we have run which is making a, a new container we have started it with podman start we've stopped it with podman stop and the listing of containers we've done that with podman ps if we wanted to see the actual images that we have on our local system for that, we would do podman images. And we see we have two. We have the UBI image and we have the image that has HTTPD running on RHEL 7. So the last thing, this goes back to that uh, first objective, which is using uh, Scopio. What we would do there is use that to inspect the container image. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to inspect the image that's in the remote repository. Clear our screen. And so we'll do Scopio. I can spell. Inspect that image. And oh, if I'm doing the remote image, I need to do docker colon slash slash. So that gives us a lot of details about the image, gives you some of the environment variables, and something that we'll see in a future video, we'll be making use of the fact that services are exposed on port 8080 and 8443. And then if we wanted to look at other things that Scopio can do, let's do man Scopio. And just like the Podman, command, we have different things that, that, that we can check out within the man pages. And it's that same command dash, or rather like parent command dash child command that, that we can look for. And if we needed to, you know, we can delete images with Scopio, but otherwise you can use Podman RMI for deleting images as well. So you have a couple of different, um, different tools that you can use to, to do the same job. 
So this was a relatively short video, but the objectives that it's asking you to do aren't super complicated. It's basically create a container by running it, start a container that you have, stop a container that you have, and list the current containers that are running, which just podman ps. And then of course, if you wanted to see containers that are also not running, you can do the um, ps-a for that. Remember, if you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure that you click like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Ring the bell when you do. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you the next time.